Electric and they have started it up. Yeah, meanwhile, it's gonna be a run on the bot lane. Oh, Jappy, it's oh, up. Oh no, the ultimate is out. That is the grand challenge and that is gonna be a kill for Jappy. Too I'm just many... crashing one wave. Rare Adam though, looking aggressive. Mm -hmm. Looking exceptionally aggressive. Things the Brahm is away, but unfortunately that does not mean you get to play. They're going and Brahm just completely denying so many auto attacks from the Sivir. The spell shield though means that the MXL is not knocked up in there. And the Tristana so well that there's not able to really but Rare Adam. Yup, he's going back in. The charm is available once again. Going quite hard in on that. Trying to stop this dragon take. It's brought really low already. We are going to see the permafrost and the smite coming out. That is going to be really, really tight. This is going to be a con. It's going to steal that dragon. And that's going to be putting on the fancy feet. Jumping all around. We got a TP coming out as Ari is coming to join this fight. She's going to be looking for an engage. We got uh, Victor right now looking to try and stop that. Dracon has joined as well. Sorry. Looks like we got another TP coming in as well. That is going to be kind Improving grounds this this time around. The Karthus ultimate does so much damage. Gandorf's though, not long for this world. No, he's not gonna get knocked up right there. Fiora is just gonna dive in, get that nice bit of damage out, get the kill. That is gonna be Tristana now trying to find the target. Jaffe looking for that engage, looking to get onto those vitals. Finally able to do it, but has to dive under tower. They're gonna take a tower shot, but it's not gonna be enough because of that red buff that they stole. Hello, folks, and welcome back. We have now got team. We've got the wet team versus team in the trees uh, coming up on this. Uh, we're currently experiencing a little bit of difficulty getting the uh, draft footage. It's not me this time. Nice pretty. That is right. I do need to mention. I have Chris Edgeworth sitting on the caster's desk with me today. So we've got our broadcaster going to be casting this game of League of Legends. Woo! Hell yeah, I'm so excited to be back on the actual desk, not on the other side managing the camera where our good man Theracles is fighting the good fight right now against the draft footage. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to be able to get out here, talk about the game that we love so much, the series, the season that we are here for, season six kicking off today. Riot doesn't want it to happen, Riot nope. doesn't want us to win, but here we are against all odds, making sure you folks get to see these games. Absolutely, yeah, no, it's like, I literally just got a notification in my client that Spectator was disabled. It's finally there, officially. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about this game real quick. We've got Mordekaiser as the first pick on the side of the wet team. Uh, and that is a, I love Mordekaiser as a champion, very powerful, very strong, uh, able to basically remove a champion from a fight with his death realm as he just takes them on one-on-one. -on -one very good whenever you're trying to get those carries off of your squishies and or get yourself some nice stacks uh, from those stats. And then we have an Aphelius pickup on in the trees with a Talia who could be going mid or jungle. I've been seeing Talia jungle a lot lately. Yeah, you know, uh, one thing one thing that I find very interesting about this blue one pick for the Mordekaiser is uh, one, you know, a long, not too long ago, we did see some changes for Mordekaiser where Mordekaiser was opened up a little bit to the jungle pool. Now, I'm not saying that once week is going to be pulling out this Mordekaiser, but I do find that little bit of flavor interesting mm -hmm. because the other side of that equation is that it's Brock Lee versus Bacon Pancakes, two perennial favorites in the top lane in friend or foe. And this seems to be a bit of a gauntlet throwdown if it does end up being this Mordekaiser in the top lane for Bacon Pancakes. I think that's exactly what it is. It is so interesting seeing these names on the side of In the Trees once again. It has been a while uh, since we have seen Broccoli, Bow Explode, Fish Fish, McGish, Henny, Kenny Hammer Spike, and He Who Slops just sitting there at the same time. It, it's like a throwback to season one. And we look at, you know, the Talia coming through as sort of a flex option along with the Sejuani. Obviously, when you see an In the Trees Sejuani coming through, you're immediately going to think that that's the bow explode mm. special. But what with, with Season 12 going on, we've seen Talia not so much in the jungle role. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this should be mid. But again, very flexible. You could have the Sejuani go top. You could have the Talia mid. You could have Bo maybe pulling this Talia out himself and flexing the Sejuani into the top. There's a lot to be seen here in the second half of the draft. 
Yeah. Now, I, I want to talk about this Aphelios pickup because Aphelios is one of those champions that I feel like if you do not have the mechanical skill to pilot the character, you really shouldn't be playing it in a competitive setting. And Kenny Hammerspike absolutely has the mechanical skill to be piloting this champion. And that is going to be something that's really interesting to see that I am excited to see him going up against this Ash, which we've been seeing a lot of Ash supports lately. So that could also be a flex there for Turtle of Doom versus Black, Ven uh, Black Venom. But I just I'm excited to see Kenny Hammerspike and what he who slops ends up taking. I'm kind of thinking I would say Nautilus, but that's like the first ban we see from wet team. So that is a very smart pickup on their side. Yeah, one thing to notice here is that uh, Zeri yet to be unseen, so that Aphelios pickup with the Sivir on the ban list is a much more important thing to note because it's pretty much a, an open offering by Kenny to say, hey, Turtle of Doom, welcome, come on in. You want to try out the most broken champion in the game right now? Give it a shot. I am known to be good on this Aphelios and, uh, you know, probably had a lot of practice on it, not on our desk but uh, or on our uh stage but also in solo queue i mean we've uh, there's been a little bit of time off between season five and six so aphelios is probably uh sharpened and clean from kenny so i find that very interesting as it looks like we're gonna get this pantheon coming mm -hmm. through and the wukong matchup against it that is interesting a wukong pickup when we've already got the mordekaiser as well so that's probably that's got to be jungle yeah wukong jungle mumu support yeah, so this means that we're picking uh, most likely mid on blue five. Um, so they're going to have the opportunity to counter pick this Talia if we assume that this is a Talia mid and a Sedge for bow. But I would not be surprised if in the trees here in the first game of the season, everyone is expecting the bow Sedge. I think that this might be the opportunity for them to, to flip the script on us. As we it see it the is an opportunity. Yeah, we do see the Galio coming through. So I'm actually a little confused by uh, the wet team's comp just because from a, I look at it, I don't instantly know what is going where because you could see a Galio support, you could see an Amumu support. Uh, it, I guess you could see a Mordekaiser support too. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of flexibility uh, on wet. We do see that with the Braum locked in, we do get a better idea. The Pantheon, I mean, it wouldn't be so great with the Aphelios uh, mm -hmm. in the bottom side, but there was ever the possibility that that could have happened. Sejuani support actually did also see some play in the LCK this season too, so we can't discount that as well. But with that, I think this is ex exactly what I, how I expected this to shake out. We're going to see the Pantheon in the top side matchup mm -hmm. against Absolutely. that Mordekaiser. I absolutely agree. Yeah, there it is right there. We've got uh, Fish Fish McGish uh, up in the top lane, actually, and Brock Lee in the mid lane. Yes. Yeah, a little, so, little bit of a swap up there. Yeah, and uh, you know what? When we see here over on the side of wet is that the Galio does go mid, which is more or less what I expected. It makes the most sense for all of this stuff. But the, the Galio does have this matchup uh, early that uh, against the Talia, I think it is uh, a little bit more in the Talia's favor because the, mm -hmm. the Galio isn't that kind of tanky anti-mage character at level one. He has to scale a little bit into that. Even by level three, it starts to be more online. But the amount of poke that you can see Talia come out with in the first two levels against a champion like Galio still can be uh, effective. And we know that Bo is going to be looking to be effective on that Sejuani. He's bringing back the classic, and we know how bloodthirsty he can be on that board. Oh, absolutely. He loves going for that blood. Uh, and I do like the uh, little mini rework they gave Talia, where the uh, Q, how the... the uh, ground works a little bit differently uh, where it just consumes it and actually throws it as a massive rock giving you a little bit of extra damage and Black Venom again this Amuma support once he got that little rework where he gave him the extra uh, charge on his Q has just been kind of one of those things where it's it's a sleeper hit it works in a lot of situations now uh, Shargan I'll, I'll, I'll uh, fill in my answer first but I'm curious where where you think that we're going to see the first blood on this map now I think that the the easy money the conventional wisdom per se would say that the ignite pantheon 
is going to be where it's at, but I actually am curious to see how crazy the bot side gets in these early matchups in lane. What about you? Where do you think we're going to see the that's blood? That's actually what I was going to say. As I was thinking, you know, there's a possibility Black Venom hits that double charge on the Q. That is going to be an easy pickup for Turtle of Doom, and they could probably get a kill on this Aphelios, who really isn't that strong in the early game as he's got to charge up those uh, guns, got to start getting those rotations down. And it's not until the flamethrower really comes out that you see a lot of damage being pumped out of them. Yeah, oh, my, oh, yeah, there we get the dive in. It looks like mm -hmm. it's just a little bit of easy trading there at the at the beginning. And uh, this this top side I think is going to be super interesting, mainly because we uh, we don't have the teleport on the Pantheon. He's just coming mm -hmm. in with that grand skyfall. So once we start getting into the team fighting and stuff, and especially. Uh, with the junglers uh, moving towards opposite directions of the map, I'm interested to see uh, what Bo is planning on doing up there. If they're going to be playing heavily around this early Herald priority, or if this is just the full clear. Uh, I, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I have a feeling it's probably more of a full clear situation. Although, this is once again the second time we've seen the combination of Braum and Sejuani. So you've got the double stuns just ready to come out. Triple once Sejuani manages to pick up the Glacial Prison. Uh, we'll probably be seeing a engage in this top lane is my expectation. So it's like we were talking about that first build last time. Uh, they probably see right there. We've already got Sejuani moving in for that engage on the Mordekaiser. And here we go. I mean, at the... I don't think there's Those a ward there. Side, there's no ward. That is going to be the flash coming out. Bacon Pancakes getting brought exceptionally low. The permafrost does not come out in time, though. Very good disengage by Bacon Pancakes to avoid giving up that first blood. Yeah, wow. The the quick fingers on the flash, it looks like. Yep. Look, I was talking about it right there a second ago. We have that engage on the bot side. Black Venom smartly choosing not to go in on that Braum while his shield's up. The winner's bite is just, it's really annoying whenever it's just sitting there blocking for the ADC. Yeah, and it looks like uh, junglers are going to trade crabs. It looks like Bo is not content to let Bacon Pancakes have a moment's peace. No. Nope. I try and stop the back, maybe even a dive as we get oh, Dive at a TP coming out. Fish, Fish, McGish going in. They are going to be able to pick up the first blood on this Mordecai, but Boo's float is going to be giving up his life, and that is going to be Bacon Pancakes picking up that kill. I think I, I love that, honestly, the bow killer instinct coming through, as you would expect a uh, champion that he has insane practice on his. Ooh, look at this Galio in the mid lane, getting a lot of damage onto Brock Lee and that Talia. All right. Well, what did I tell you? I said level three is about when the Galio can stand up a little bit and start playing a little bit more aggressive with the tankiness he builds up with levels. So puts that puts that Talia and a little bit of pressure, sends her back, uh, burns that cleanse. So it's going to be a long walk back as that wave is going to be crashing. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing that Sejuani is there to catch it. Uh, that's going to be a nice bit of gold into the Sejuani's pocket. Help her try and get uh, some of those uh, items a little bit faster. And Ash, once again, Turtle of Doom using the volley to just be an absolute menace and peppering this back line. It's, just, it's annoying more than anything to just keep getting slowed over and over and over. You know, the I'm damage isn't there. The yeah, <laughs> what the one thing I'm noticing is that this Mordekaiser took advantage of his uh, money bags that he got from uh, Bo dying to tower mm -hmm. and opted into the early thorn mail. Now, what I find interesting about this and some top lane theologians will be able to correct me in the chat if I'm speaking out of turn as a lowly support player. But as we see bacon pancakes give him a little, little bit of the business to him. Uh, but what I like of, or what I'm interested about with this thorn mail is that, you know, early there's not a ton of of uh, healing coming out for the Grievous Wounds, other than the natural regeneration, which is big. Ooh, nice stun. But the point I want to make is, is there's a, a little bit of a back and forth I've seen some places about Warden's Mail versus the Thorn Mail. Um, I, and, you know, I'm not even saying that I would say the Warden's Mail should be in sort of the, the uh, Thorn Mail here. It could even be just Tabby's and, and a Claw here. But I do find it interesting that he's so showing, hey, I got this Thorn Mail early. I'm going to be shutting down your healing. So if you go for that Eclipse, just know that I'm already ready for it. And I think that's a really interesting show to Fish Fish McGish on this Pantheon here. Saying, hey, if you're going to try and, you know, uh, get into this uh, trading war with me as Bo's Lord comes in. Yep, Bo is already looking for that re-engage onto this Mordekaiser. Bacon Pancakes going into the Death Realm with Fish Fish McGish. Managing to try and do enough damage here. They are going to be able to pick up that kill. They are going to have the extra stats. Galio's coming in for the double knockup. Nice bit of engage just countering that gank from the Sejuan. And we have so much going on in this top lane once we joining as well. Very beautifully played by Wet. 
Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to imagine that INT has left there scratching their heads a little bit, wondering where it all went wrong. Bacon Pancake absolutely cold-blooded with his approach to Mordekaiser on this. He's chill, just lets Bo Explode come on, and he's like, hey, let me just welcome my good friend here into the Shadow Realm so we can have a little one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> as soon as he comes out of the Shadow Realm or the Realm of Death, as I am a caster now and I need to be accurate with my casts on the spells, with the Realm of Death when he comes out, we got Galio, quick on the fingers, coming right in. So when you got that express coming through, it's a good thing he was able to hit that six and, and complete on that crash onto the counter gank. See, and, and I am with you on the Bramble Vest in the sense of, like, I think that that is a great first pickup. It gives a, a lot of tankiness and a lot of an interesting amount of re return damage, which is what I think is really important for Bacon Pancakes there because they're able to use their own shield in order to get some health back. Uh, and we do see now they picked up the Ninja Tabbies, like you mentioned, and now they're actually starting to build their Mythic, picking up the Spellbook. And so what that means is they're going to be able to take... They're just mitigating so much of this early pantheon damage that they're able to just be so tanky when these guys try to go in on them uh and it just allows him to continue these fights and look at this we have right here bow explode oh, trying to look for an engage but it really feels like wet just has int's number based on these reads yeah i mean wet is uh surprisingly keeping int a perennial favorite in the se in the seasons on the back foot here as we are early into the first game of the season for season six for these teams and i think it's really interesting to see how we've seen a lot of this game being played through the top side and we had identified early though we thought bot might end up being a little bit more chaotic Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like it's been all quiet on the western front, or in the bot lane front, I should say, down there. As the, the junglers have largely left them to themselves to sort of scrap it out. We saw Bo there uh, cooking, waiting for it. We saw the Talia from Broccoli roaming down, trying to get that deep dive, but in the end they opt for the reset. And I think that is a lot to do with he who slops. I bet uh, when we look down in that bot lane, he's doing a fantastic job protecting Kenny Hammer Spike, making sure that he's not taking this extra poke damage from the uh, volleys, putting up the winner's bite in order to make sure that he's safe. And we do right here, we have the Grand Skyfall coming in. Very good disengage coming up from Bacon Pancakes, and he just kind of returns some of that damage. And in the meantime, we got a fight going on here in the mid lane. The charm coming out as Cheru does manage to get Broccoli brought exceptionally low. The stun now underneath the tower means that he's going to take a couple of shots for his trouble, but in actuality is able to get out fairly fine and come out even in this fight. Broccoli doing a good job on that disengage. Bacon is just ready for this fight, though. Oh, I, he goes in oh, here. Oh, that was a good Glacial Prison predicting the dash, knowing that there's a bit of a charge on it, able to get the target. But unfortunately, the Ash Arrow is not able to find another stun to continue that fight. Very good disengage from Cheru, though. They are able to avoid getting taken out by the combination of Bow Explode and Broccoli. Yeah, INT there uh, clearly were uh, putting a lot of resources into trying to get that kill, get that gold, get that pressure into the mid lane for the likes of Broccoli. Broccoli, for his part, hit some really nasty um, uh, Ws for Talia. Mm -hmm. Not as uh, aware of the Talia skills, but uh, the, the re relocations from the Talia W there were really excellent. Uh, just a little bit, it looks like, of uh, just a missing. Uh, there just just pixels of difference just pick uh, just a moment of time and that could have been a kill but in the end uh, looks like Charu is gonna get out after uh, he did make that uh, big uh, push onto Broccoli try mm -hmm. try to dance with him We're gonna and see it turns here. out he's gonna push back here's Bo yeah it feels like Black Venom is just he knows something's up he was looking for it he was trying to get some vision on there now we find it we see the Glacial Fissure coming out gonna get the knock up onto Black Venom but the ultimate from Black is gonna be able to cause that disengage to happen no. Very oh, well done. Um, so much safety on the sides of both of these bot lanes, using their spells so defensively, making sure they're able to protect each other. And again, this dragon being ignored, and we're seeing a Hextech Drake being brought back up. We do see the Galio getting knocked back into the stun of Talia. There's a lot of damage coming out. The permafrost type to find it. We do see Fish Fish Mikesh able to find their target. Braum is stunned under tower, meaning he takes a bunch of damage from that, but that is going to be another kill going over to the side of Team Wet. This is now four to two game. Yeah, you know, overall, I mean, I feel like it, in the trees, you know, to their credit, they're not going to take this line down. Boxwood's back Whoa. down here again. 
Yep. He, he is looking for that engage, looking for that target, but we know that the Glacial Prison is on cooldown, but so is Amumu's ultimate, so there's going to be no root. Black Venom is just getting absolutely shredded by the Severum right there. Those Chakrams doing so much damage. And we do see him able to pick up a kill. Yeah, and it looked like INT now feeling the pressure. You know, they did have that trade in the mid lane a moment ago. And then Bo, instead of going back to business, going to clear out his jungle, he's like, hey, I got to go back and harass these folks on the bot side. Not a moment of peace for them. Uh, I do like this sort of, uh, I do like this instinct from INT to sort of speed up the tempo of the game. Uh, when you're falling behind like, like that, it's nice to just even get a little bit of gold into your pockets, especially as you're trying to make the breakpoint for your first items. So, um, you know, you do give some gold back to the pocket of the Wukong there, but uh, just, you know, putting that pressure on the map, you're getting gold around the map from minions getting your waves pushed, having that kind of tempo. You take what you can get when you've been down in the early game, and now we're seeing it, you know, not too far behind. They're only uh, 700 gold behind. I'd be interested if we could get Ryan to hit X on that, if we could see where the gold distribution is looking. And uh, we can see in the top side, there's that 700 gold different going in the way of Mordekaiser. But when you look around the map, you got nickels and dimes being taken uh, from other lanes as well. So it looks like the majority of that difference is going to be found on the top side. And be interesting to see how they're able to play around this Mordekaiser in the side lanes on the side of wet. See, if there's a champion who really benefited from the durability patch uh, a little while back, Mordekaiser is definitely one of them. He's just become an absolute monster when you build straight tank and you start, you build a couple of AP items in there, but you build straight tank. Otherwise, you just deal so much damage and you have such great survivability that it just makes the your ability to control these fights and kind of manipulate them so versatile. Just look at that. He's able to tank a tower shot with that hey. just one W. Yeah, and if we, uh, Ryan, if you could zoom out just a little bit, please, so we can uh, take a look at what Wukong is doing and zoom out a little bit on him. That would be great, because we're looking at Wukong. One week is trying to get in there and clear that vision, but INT is smothering the bottom side of this map with his vision. As we were talking about, we thought that the Aphelios was going to be a point here. I mean, you have the Pantheon in the solo lane, but the early damage, I felt like you could abuse this Braum passive. Now, as we start to get towards mid-game, it's looking like INT is playing much more towards the bottom side of the map, playing for this dragon stacking, playing towards Kenny on this Aphelios. He's got the Gale Force in hand now. He's a little bit more safer. He's got that cleanse. So mm -hmm. we'll be looking to see how INT plays around the bot side of this map as they're moving their vision nicely onto that side. Yeah, and we do have about another minute until the next Rift Herald comes up, and we're probably going to be seeing uh, a lot of pressure put up there by Team Wet as they've already dropped the first one in the top lane. Look at this. we got Bo Explode looking for another engage on Bacon Pancakes. Bacon's like, I'm not getting caught out again. I'm just putting up these wards and just making sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, it's like, I already did the 1v2. I've already done the 1v3. I don't want to keep doing this. Yeah, he does have the Leeching Leer, if I'm remembering correctly now, in his inventory. So he's getting a little bit of Omnivamp back, mm -hmm. at least for these trades, so he can play in that side lane uh, a little bit more sustain as the Pantheon has finally come through the Vamp Scepter. Of course, he is going towards that Eclipse for that sustain and getting a lot. You can get a lot of healing from uh, just one of those uncharged Qs. As Ooh, Charu dashing right on top of the edge of the Taleo, uh ground and that means that that's going to be a stun that is just really devastating to that gank yeah so i mean it's good we're seeing more uh pressure being put on to, to brock lee from what they're not willing to let this uh mid lane be uh conceded now that the, the talia has got her um everfrost online and got that extra cc to line up with the w so it's good. Uh, we get the, the burn, the, the cleanse. It's not an exceptionally long cooldown. You got the cleanse. Now it's a matter of whether you can come back while that's still an issue and try and burn that flash as we see yeah. a dive on the bot side. Already looking for that dive. We have Sejuani diving in on top of the Braum. Glacial Flitter is going to come out. It's going to find the Ash knocking up right there. We have a TP coming out as well as we are seeing uh, the Mordekaiser coming in to join this fight. That is going to be a double kill. Kenny Hammer Spike manages to take down Turtle of Doom. Black Venom going down to Kenny Hammer Spike as well. And unfortunately, look at that damage damage that the uh, bacon is able to soak up that is just kind of like a one for one but at the same time i feel like wet is coming out on top of that one for two sorry yeah well uh the one thing on the other side is we're seeing the fish fish is gonna get this gold um i mean you do burn a lot of summoners a lot committed from the side of int 
Um, it, what is good is, as you say, they do get the return kills. We look a little bit at the gold. The Mordekaiser is very cash flush still. Mm -hmm. Continues to be the rich man on the map. And we look in the bot side too. Gold's about even, which I think is about where you would want to be. I mean, looking at the CS, the Ash is slightly up. As long as you're not letting this Aphelio start pulling ahead of you too much. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get really messy. Of course, the Aphelios is going to scale smoothly into the late game now that he's online. He's just got to keep getting his gold, keep getting that experience, and the, the later it gets, the more dangerous this man becomes as he's down here, 1v2. Look I don't know about that. This. That root, beautiful use of the Gravitum. Oh man, this guy is a master. What did I say in the coming into this game? Aphelios been around for a while. He's like, hey, I left the most broken champion in the game open. Feel free to pick it as we see the Q. <laughs> The Q coming out from Black Venom, looking for that gauge, thinking the Aphelios is alone, but in fact they are not. He Who Slaps has already come in to rejoin the Glacial Prison, is going to find the Amuma. The damage coming out from the Flail, that extra health on the Amuma is just more of a death sentence for him. The Stand United as He Who Slaps jumps on the Candy Hammers by giving him those extra abilities. We see that Turtle is trying to find some target, but look at this. We've got the uh, dropped Rift Herald in the mid lane, means that Team Wet is able to get a nice bit of damage, taking down the mid turret, getting three quarters of the health gone on the mid second tier mid turret and bow explode continuing this engage on the bot lane they get the freeze turtle of doom is going to be taken down as the permafrost holds them in place kenny hammer spike able to pick that up beautifully played tower dive and once again we're seeing a death realm brought out fish fish is taking on a low health mordekaiser not necessarily something you want to be doing as a pantheon though Oh, but no, he does manage no. to find the kill. That is beautifully done. Mordekaiser getting taken down, and that is going to be a huge shutdown into the back pocket of Fish Fish Magish. Now he's the one with the bounty. Wow, and how the turntable, Zach. It looked like Wet was really in this game, and now it looks like INT says, ah, 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 not so fast, as we see quickly. It looks like on the bot side and the top side, uh, we see the trade in the mid lane for Wet, which I want to highlight. I think was about the best they're going to do when you have Galio. It's either he's there in mid lane or he's on the uh, ambulance to the bot side as they were getting dove. Uh, he had to commit to that push with the Rift Herald. It's the best you're going to do. They were able to get the mid uh, outer tower. They're able to get that big charge on the inner tower, but it's all coming up in the thieves, right? Or uh, in the trees, rather. <laughs> thieving, thieving this win out of Wet's pockets, it seems. Uh, from an early start from them, In the Trees is now starting to find their focus. It, it does look like In the Trees has found their focus. They're able to find these targets, and that means that unfortunately there's nothing they can do uh, that Wet can do to stop this dragon take. Uh, we do see that Bacon Pancakes has managed to finish the Rift Maker, which I don't believe he had uh, during that fight against the Pantheon. The last stand secondary rune is so devastating on Mordekaiser. It can just help you turn those fights around when you get brought so, to such low health points. Uh, unfortunately, just wasn't able to do enough there. And it allows so much for In the Trees to retake this momentum, like you mentioned. And it's just causing them to kind of take this game from what was looking like a micro play situation in Wet's favor to a macro play victory that In the Trees is trying to build here. Now I'm going to be interested to see with the shakeup of how things are going. Uh, the Pantheon, you know, getting that kill onto the Mordekaiser. I think it's time that once Mordekaiser pushes this wave out, it's time to put Mordekaiser in the bot side. You have Dragon down for a while. You can have a split push on the other side of the map while you have your ADC clearing out those mid waves and just sort of play the wave game. I think that, uh, you know, you're going to be playing for uh, some of these... Um, some of these picks that you can do with the likes of, you know, if you're lucky, you might find a random person wandering around in your death realm. But more likely, you're going to have your uh, Wukong or your Amumu find something and you're going to call in the goon squad. You'll have Wukong, Galio coming in from across the map. You'll have the Ash Arrow coming in. And I think that's what Wet needs to play for. Play Calm, play Reserve, play these waves with the right lane assignments. And sort of look in these next few minutes as we wait for the next objectives to come up before they might be forced into a fight. What they can try and snag if In the Trees is a little less discerning about their pathing. Yeah, losing those bot lane turret uh, is just causing it, it to be really difficult for them to try and contest these dragons that In the Trees has already taken two of. Uh, we do see now that there's kind of some coalescing around the mid game. We're probably going to be starting to see a little bit of an ARAM going here for a few minutes uh, as NA is wont to do. 
Uh, we, they just like doing that uh, as they start getting these lane swaps going. We do see Mordekaiser continue to go into this top lane, trying to keep that Pantheon occupied, who's looking for an engage now. They do have the Grand Skyfall ready for this dive, should they want to take it. Yeah, and it looks like Fish is literally chilling just in Fog of War out there, ready at a moment's notice. As I see him pacing back and forth on the mini-map there. He's gone ahead and hopped over to the Krugs. It looks like he's going to clear out that wave that's getting pushed in on the top side by the Mordekaisers. We play, you know, LS's favorite game, uh, Freeze and Push. Freeze and push, freeze and push, freeze and push. It's a, it's a back and forth, you gotta love to see it kind of situation. Bow explode, clearing up his vision. Once again, the vision war is going on. Uh, we do see Talia looking to continue this push down on the bot lane. Ash just kind of trying to free farm it up. Looks like they're about to get engaged on those. Talia is like, hey, I see you. Uh, and in the meantime, we got a fight going on. A little bit of back and forth in the top lane as well. Mordekaiser trying to get as much pressure as they can. They're just able to shove this into the top tower. Uh, it's just... We're going to be seeing a little bit of jockeying for position right now, and it's until one team makes a major mistake or a major misstep, the other team capitalizes on it. That's when it's going to get exciting. Oh, this is what I've been waiting to see for a few minutes now is finally we're starting to see once we can Black Venom getting together, putting some of that vision more on the top side, especially if you're going to keep the Mordekaiser in there, putting the pressure on that top inner turret. I think that having you're going to want to invest in not only the vision in the top side because it's going to protect your top laner, but... You know, a lot of people make mistakes when they're moving around in what they consider to be their own jungle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially, uh, you know, it's early in the season. It's the first game. Um, and I, I think that this is uh, the time when people, uh, even in organized play like friend or foe is, are most susceptible to some of those quote unquote solo queue mentality ideas um, or thoughts where you're just like, oh, there's no way that they would have vision here, you know, because they don't they don't have a, we don't have any scouting. No one's had any chance to watch VODs. You don't know necessarily where everyone's or you haven't even bothered to look where people are trying to mm -hmm. do the porting. so this could be an opportunity for them if they're able to capitalize oh, grand skyfall looking for chiru not able to find it flash out to stay safe yeah that was uh, i think just uh, keeping keeping them honest making sure hey just a little flash check hey you got that flash yes you do all right thanks for playing and uh, everyone goes to reset yeah, and unfortunately, like, it's not a, sh it's a short cooldown on the Grand Skyfall, but it's not like an instant uh, cooldown on the Grand Skyfall. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if Wet is able to play around that, because now Pantheon has no way to engage in these side lanes. Mordekaiser still has TP up, so they can join at any point. They're just continuing this push on the top side, and we can see right here that it, very clearly Wet knows that they're walking on vision. They're waiting to see what In the Trees does, trying to catch them out. Dragon's coming up here right now, so we've got Mount Drake, which is going to be a massive shield for whoever manages to pick up that soul. We do Mordekaiser doing what top laners do, pushing in this top lane continuously as they're just kind of trying to push it out. We got a fight brewing right here around the dragon pit. And unfortunately, it looks like the wave is not exactly where Bacon Pancakes would like, so he's not going to have as much pressure being able to be exerted while this is happening. But he's still going to be able to crash that wave as they're getting the backs. Of course, this does set up for the In the Trees soul point on the next dragon, so you absolutely are going to have to commit to that because... You know, no one wants to see the extra tankiness coming through. For some of these squishy champions, that, that could be quite the deciding factor. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're counting on these squishies and then suddenly they got a little bit of extra armor magic resist, a little bit of extra shield there if you get the soul. Um, it, it could be what they need because, you know, the Pantheon building into this uh, cleaver, uh, which is excellent, of course, going against the massive amount of armor he finds himself against on the likes of the Mordekaiser. But uh, the sheer amount of... Oh, here oh, we go. Glacial Prison's going to find Bacon Pancakes as they're going to be uh, taken down. They're going to be a double stun coming out as well. We do not see the Death Realm brought out quite yet as Bacon is getting brought exception. Though he's going to choose to hold on to it and he's going to go down. That is going to be a shutdown going into the pocket of he who swaps, though. Not necessarily the target you want once because it's also going to get caught out. He's going to get taken down by Kenny Hammerspike. This is going to be a great Baron call on the side of In the Trees. And those picks are going to be really, really painful for Wet in the long run. And all of this over a red buff. Oh, no. All over a red buff. He got the double stun from Cheru. Cheru dashing over the Talia worked ground. Uh, unfortunately, just not quite able to do it uh, in order to stay alive. And uh, they're going to able to jump out. Uh, but that is going to be the Baron going down right here. So that is a huge objective in the back of In the Trees. You were talking about the uh, 
Mountain Drake shielding. Yeah, All yeah. Champion like a Felios? That is terrifying. Yeah, and you know, as we see this replay coming through here, we go a little further back, but we can see as they start populating. <laughs> It's all good, homie, as we uh, we talk about... Oh, the one thing I wanted to bring up with the Pantheon uh, is to get all that healing and all of that armor magic resist and that shielding, he becomes a deceptively tanky boy. So, uh, as we continue to see the replay here, uh, there we go. Uh, either way, I think we might be back at live. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I believe replay. this is actually the uh, the red buff is going to get taken. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be seeing the fight around the red buff here momentarily. Bacon Pancakes going in on this. Uh, we are going to see Bo explode and the rest of the team kind of looking for that engage. The Glacial Prison coming out so early uh, in that fight and just rooting Bacon in place is devastating. And yeah. I think it's stunned right there before the Death Realm comes out. I think he's trying to cast it. Uh, no, it looks like it's still on cooldown. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's still on cooldown. Oh, it is still on cooldown. I don't know if it's spectator. It could be spectator bug. We, you never know when it comes to Rito game spaghetti. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it just looks like uh, that was just a little bit too much greed. Uh, if you look at the vision line uh, on the minimap still, they did not have a ton of vision to be wandering in there to try and uh, take that red buff. And here we see that it's going to cost them once we had to uh, show face here in the river that's going to lead to a death for him and that's going to lead to a baron in the hands of in the trees so uh, once was a uh, uh, wet's early game has now become in the trees mid and late game as it looks like they got they're wearing blue they're going to be getting ready to be putting on that mountain drake uh soul pretty soon unless wet can find a way to put some pressure on them, find a way to get into these scraps, and find either the Death Realm that they need or the Wombo Combo with all of the buttons. They got all of the ultimates to click at the same time, do big circles, big CC. If they can connect that, there's still a way in for them, but the door is closing. Mm -hmm. And you know, see, here's the th an interesting thing about trees, is they can lie dormant for a very, very long time. But you give them even a little bit of moisture, they're just going to... Slurp it right up, and Team Wet is just giving in the trees exactly what they need as they start to come back into this render foe series. And, uh, oh, as we see the flash put out on the bot side. Nice dashing. Glacial Prison going to go a little bit wide. Black Venom getting brought exceptionally low. But look at this. This tower, uh, the great use of trading tower aggro right there. Look at that. Black Venom just getting the nice bit of damage off. The Calibrum auto attack extended auto range is just, it's so gross. Brutal. Whenever you have something up, it's just, it, it really is just awful for, for the opponent. Yeah, and it's just, oh. Now, oh. That global auto attack from the Clelebrim grabbing yeah. them. That's just hitting the Ash. Turtle of Doom taking a decent amount of damage. The Baron empowered uh, turrets right there, basically taking down the mid inhibitor turret. It's only got a quarter of its health left. Uh, there is an essentially a free map for In the Trees to farm right now. Yeah, and this is a very gold rich power play for the likes of In the Trees. Uh, they pick up the Baron, they get the nice gold from taking down the purple snake. But then, you know, they haven't really done much in the in the realm of pushing on the map so far. And in the course of taking this Baron and using the buff, they've gotten themselves three turrets and a sizable amount of damage on that mid inhibitor turret too. It's down, it will go down in just a breeze. And Fishmish McGish is uh, hang close back. at this, yeah. He could be in the position to dive him. If he wanted to dive him, he totally could. Uh, basically, at this point, it's just the Baron empowered uh, cannon mini that he's worried about. Look at this, just blocking so much of the damage. The Death Realm does come out. Bacon Pancake's fighting him in the place where he wants to be fighting him. But unfortunately, there's just not enough damage on his side. Not quite enough survivability. He's getting brought exceptionally low. We do see the Galio coming in, trying to save his ally. Not quite able to. Jumping in onto Fish Fish, looking for that engage. The taunt causes him to be just a little bit slow. Fish Fish with a good jump in taunt. Black Venom looking for the engage on the queue, and unfortunately that is going to be a dead Pantheon. Shutdown going over to Cheru as he does manage to get revenge for his dead Death God. Well, the, the best you can say out of that play is that luckily the shutdown gold ends up in the right place. It ends up on Cheru. And we see that the dragon is slated to come up. Uh, bacon pancakes if he gets up in time for this dragon, which it looks like he will. Oh, Could TP no. into it, but we oh, got a no. fanatic. Turtle, turtle, push. don't do it. I, he, he clearly can smell 
but I don't know if his, uh, he's gonna get oh. up no. Oh, no. He walked up too far! He's gonna get jumped on immediately! The Ted Wadi just absolutely sees him! Kenny Hammers by picking up that kill! Oh, man! Just needed to wait a couple more seconds. As I was gonna, as he took the words out of my mouth, I was gonna say, but I don't know if he's gonna greed for a ward or not. And we see him edging forward. He clearly <laughs> knows that there's danger to be out there. And he's just like, puts his toe just a teensy bit too far. And they take him all the way back to the fountain. And unfortunately, that means easy dragon solos. They get a dragon sweep, uh, taking all four of the drakes. They now have that shield, which is going to be just gross on the Sejuani and absolutely terrifying on the uh, Aphelios because now he's just going to be surviving even longer. And an Aphelios that survives in these fights is just something you do not want to see because that is when the uh, Severum just starts building up its stacks and then you just get hit in the face with 20 different Chakrams all at once. Yep, and one of the only things that can be better than Sejuani's passive is Sejuani's passive with a free mountain shield on it to benefit all of those extra resistances she's going to get from the frost armor. So, uh, Bo, probably not going to be taking too much damage very anytime soon. Uh, very tanky. He's got the aftershock as well. There's not a trundle in sight to steal all those resistances. So that's one big tanky lad out there. I just realized I've been saying Severum when I meant to be saying uh, Crescendum, like that. Uh, I, I, I was talking I about the Chakras. Noticed. I yeah. hadn't even noticed. I, I, was, I was saying Severum, which is the lifesteal gun, and yes. Crescendum is the Chakras. <laughs> yes. But regardless, I just I, I do like this uh, play now coming out from Wet as they're prepping for this Baron. They know that it's coming up here in a couple of seconds. It's a nice bounty for them. They know that they need to get some gold into everybody's pockets, and that's a perfect way to do it. It's an easy uh, 2,500, which it will just put them back to basically even uh, uh, or very, very close to. But you can already see here in the trees, it's just like, no, we're not going to give you that opportunity. We're going to go in this uh, dash in. Glacial Prison coming out. Turtle Doom having to flash over the Talia wall, which is very well placed. And unfortunately, that is going to mean that the rest of the team gets uh, trying to engage on this as wet. You do see that Wukong not quite able to get the right knockout. Black Venom getting flashed oh, on, dropping oh. the ult on the Bogues Blood. The Bogues Blood's taking tower damage. Tower damage doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, Kenny Hammer Spike is just going to jump in on the Black Venom, getting the shots off, getting the triple kill. We see the Grand Skyfall coming out as Pantheon just gets absolutely devastating. We see Vega Pancakes in the background going into the Death Realm, trying to take this one out. Does manage to pick up a down gold, but unfortunately has four members of In the Trees waiting for him when he comes out. And that is going to be game as we see the final push coming out from In the Trees. Yep, and you have to imagine that Bacon Pancakes shouting worth in all chat gets that thousand dollar, thousand gold shut down as he heads to the Death Realm rich, but it's gonna be In the Trees who leaves richer with the win in the first day of Friend or Foe Season 6. That is exactly, they're, they're leaving 50 gold richer from that uh, Nexus explosion. All, All right. right. Well, what an opening game from In the Trees right there, coming out and actually managing to just showcase why they were victors in previous seasons, why they are part of the old guard, and just an absolutely devastating performance. Wet doing a great job showing a strong early game. They just kind of lost it in that mid one as Ophelia started to come online. Yeah, and you know, Aphelios, it turns out he do still does have that 200 years of game design experience in hand. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, fabulous uh, Kenny Hammer Spike, uh, white and green gun, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the uh, I won't even waste our time here trying to remember them. It's Severum and I want to say the, the Crescendo. What, uh, white and green gun is going to be uh, Celebrum and Calibrum, uh, Crescendo. Calibrum, there Calibrum, you go. Calibrum. Calibrum. Yep. Yeah, but though that is such a nightmare when you're trying to fight around those objectives. You have mm -hmm. the insane range. You get the bajillion chakras <laughs> from your from your moonlight vigil. If you can land it on even two people, you just end up circled by a bunch of floating chakras. And then yeah, uh, as we touched on there towards the end of the game, you get that mile long uh, a passive proc uh, with the the chakras, and uh, it's it's dangerous. Once you get past the the rough point of the early game, if you don't get pressured too hard as an Aphelios, you get that gale force. Uh, it starts to get messy, and when you don't have a champion named Zeri with a Yumi stapled to it, you look absolutely the worst example of 200 years that we have seen. But, yep. 
I, I personally, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I like Aphelius as a design. I think it's really creative. And I understand why people hate it. I get it. I understand. But at the same time, hey, unique is good. But at the same time, terrible to balance around. With that, though, we're going to be taking a quick break, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We've got Team Washed going up against Team RLS, who are really late at signing up to things apparently this season. So it's going to be, you know, kind of par for the course with the delay due to the spectator. And unfortunately, so don't go away, folks. Drop by FOF Esports. Check out the FOF Connect. Get yourself a nice bit of reading done in the break. Me time, and we will be right back. Thank you. 